Yo, so we're back on the CA podcast. Uh, it's a Tuesday night. Our draft is coming up. It's this Saturday. I know we're all looking forward to it, so I figured it was time to get rolling. Uh, that being said, I'm glad that we're doing a keeper league, and I'm glad that we have some, uh, you know, some controversy headed into the draft because this makes for a much more interesting podcast than the one that I had released uh, previously uh, last year before we had our draft when I cho- like tried to track people's drafting trends and just had no concept of what I was talking about. There was no substance to that podcast. It was terrible. So I'm glad that we have keepers to argue about, and I'm glad there's trade deadlines and all that as we're heading into the draft on Saturday. Um, so basically what I was doing for this podcast, what I uh, had in mind was to look over everyone's keepers and kind of analyze them um, and make my predictions of who people are going to keep. So I know someone, had, a couple of us had sent out emails that somewhat uh, ruined my surprises. So for those people, I'll, I'll address how correct I was. Um, starting with Jason Plotsker, if you look at his team, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers for $93 is kind of a kind of a d- tough call to make because $103 is so much money and Rodgers is decent but I don't know so you have to think about that one but if you look at Eli Manning he's got Eli Manning for $40 and so what I think his first keeper his two year keeper is going to be Eli Manning because you get him next year for just 50 and then the year after for 55 and Eli was really really great last year and he's just getting better so I mean that to me is a no brainer for Plaster to try and lock up Eli as long as he can um, you look at his, then he has one, a one year deal he can throw out, and I think it, it would be Jordy Nelson. As I said, Rogers for 103 is just a little tall, especially if you're already keeping Eli for that really good rate. Um, so, I, and McCoy also for $77, I mean, yeah, you know, you could probably get him for around that. And Jordy Nelson, his value is so high on a one year contract because he's a $0 bid, and you get him for one year at $10. So I, I think Plotsky is going to keep Eli for two and uh, Jordy for one, and he confirmed that in his email that he sent out. So I was right about that one. Um, if you look at my team next, uh, you know, really I only have two guys that you would consider keepable, uh, Des Bryant for $38 and then Marshawn Lynch for $12. Um, as I was somewhat intimating uh, via email, I think you can just take one look at my team and see there's no way I would keep Des Bryant and there's no way I would not keep Marshawn Lynch. So really the only decision for me was whether or not I should keep Marshawn Lynch for one year or for two years. And so I, I'm going to predict that uh, I keep him for one year uh, just because he's kind of a gamble and you don't know what's up with year two. Um, all right, looking at Oaks's team, this is an interesting one because Oaks in that trade with Ariel had picked up Arian Foster, who is a great value because Ariel somehow got him last year for $73. And so Oaks is now able to keep him for one year at 83 or two years at 88. And so, I, I, I mean, you know, that's a great value. It's a lot of money, so it's going to probably be the most expensive keeper of anyone's. But it's well worth it because you're still a solid, like, 15 to $20 under Arian Foster's value, even at that keeper value. So I, I predict he'll keep him for one just because Oaks is a little gun-shy when it comes to committing to two years to Arian Foster. So I think he'll keep him for one. Um, you look at his other keepers, he's got Jason Witten maybe for $12, and then Jonathan Stewart for 4 and then Alex Smith for 2 Alex Smith maybe is an outside shot, but if he's keeping Foster for 1, then he's going to have to keep Smith for 2, and you really want a 2-year keeper contract with Alex Smith? No thank you. Um, all right, if you look at uh, Krause's team, um, he uh, has Wes Welker that he could potentially keep, uh, who's only $13. He's got a big budget uh, potential keeper on Roddy White, who he drafted last year for $69. And then he's got Fitzpatrick, who is uh, was $11. And then Hakeem Nix, who's had some problems with his foot. And he's uh, $56. So I don't know. I mean, there's a couple of interesting values there. Uh, Roddy White is not would not be an insane to pay $79 for him. I mean, that's a, it's a large sum, and you're probably overbidding for a wide receiver. But he is one of the best wide receivers. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's possible. I don't think Krause will do it. Krause won't. He'll want to use that money for the auction. Um, I do think he'll keep Wes Welker. Or I did. I'm sorry. I, I know he's going to keep Welker now. But I did, when I wrote this, uh, think that he was going to keep Welker for one year uh, just because $23 is solid. Welker's playing on his franchise tender this year, so I, this might be his last year, so you wouldn't want to put a two-year deal on him. Um, at the time I wrote this, I thought he would keep Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, he emailed out that he's not going to, but I thought Fitzpatrick was a pretty decent deal to get him on a two-year deal for just 21 and then 26, and then to buy out of that is not too bad. But he's uh, keeping Welker for one, it looks like. 
And then uh, Justin, if you look at Justin's team, he's only got two. Uh, Philip Rivers, uh, that was eighty-seven dollars, and then Malcolm Floyd for a dollar. Uh, you know, who the hell knows what Justin's gonna do? I, I would imagine that he wouldn't keep either one of these, but I don't know. Maybe he keeps Phil Rivers. I don't know. That I really don't know what to tell you on that one. Uh, Denenberg, if you look at Denenberg's team, um, you know, one obviously sticks out to you, uh, Gronkowski. He got him for zero dollars last year, so obviously he's sick. He's he's easily the best tight end and, and better than almost every wide receiver. So obviously Denenberg's going to keep him for two years just for $10 and then $15. Um, he's got Mike Wallace, who's a, kind of a high price tag at 47 considering he's been holding out. Um, so I, I, I probably wouldn't keep my, uh, Mike Wallace. And then, But then he does have Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram is $14. I mean, that's I don't know. It's, it's something to think about. I mean, the Saints situation is definitely weird, but – Keeping Ingram for $24 is definitely something to think about. But he'll obviously keep Gronk. That's my prediction is that he'll just keep Gronk for two. Um, if you look at Deutsch's team, he's got a couple of interesting ones. I know he was one who kind of spilled the beans on his keepers as well. Um, C.J. Spiller for one. Uh, Brandon Lloyd for $25 with the Patriots. Aaron Hernandez also with the Patriots for a $1. Uh, and then Mark Sanchez for 17 I don't think so. And then Fred Jackson. So he's got Spiller and Jackson, both of which are kind of interesting guys. Um, he, uh, I, I had predicted that he was going to keep Fred Jackson for two years, um, and then uh, you know it'd be eleven dollars and sixteen dollars. Um, it you know looks like he's only going to or he is going to do that. My other prediction was that Brandon Lloyd. I thought he'd keep Brandon Lloyd because Brandon Lloyd is back. Josh McDaniels is back with Brady, and so it seems like they would have a, a good hookup, Brady and Lloyd. So I would think a one-year deal for thirty-five dollars would have been interesting, but it looks like he's not going to go that way. Um, Ariel. Ariel was the big uh, the sleeper uh, heading into this uh, keeper session because he had made the white flag trade earlier in the year and picked up some serious keeper pieces. And so it's time for that to come to fruition. Um, obviously, A.J. Green, best of all of them, he got for a dollar. So he'll definitely keep A.J. Green a sick top 10 wide receiver for two years at uh, $11 and then $16, which is just incredible value. Um, and then he had Ryan Matthews for $34. He had Santana Moss for 10 and then Andy Dalton for one. And so when I put this together, in my mind, it seemed to make sense to keep Green and Dalton. It seems like, you know, keeping Dalton for one year at $11, you're not married to him. You don't have to – I mean, he, there's a chance he might suck, but it's only one year at $11. It's not the end of the world. Um, so I thought he would have kept him, but it sounds like he's going to keep Matthews uh, in spite of the weird whatever car accident, collarbone, or – Whatever the hell happened to Ryan Matthews, I don't even know. It's just one in a long string of ridiculous injuries that I would not want to deal with when it came to fantasy. So I, I wouldn't keep him, but I predict he was going to keep Dalton. Looks like Ariel is probably going to keep uh, Matthews. Uh, Ben's team, Ben has, uh, you know, I don't know. This one could go a couple of different ways. He's got some, some pretty expensive guys. Uh, Matt Ryan uh, to keep would be – or he, he was he was uh, drafted for $51. Marcus Colston is $22. Deshaun Jackson, 38 And No Sean Moreno for 32 You can pretty much throw out No Sean for 32 um, You know, keeping Deshaun Jackson for one year is a high price tag, but he's a, sort of a, a promising guy for this year. Colston at 22 doesn't really make much sense. Ryan for 61 it depends. I mean, if Ben – thought that Ryan was just going to have a great season, it, it wouldn't be crazy to keep him, but I don't know, it's sort of a high price tag for a guy who's never been the best fantasy quarterback. Um, my, my prediction for Ben's team is that he keeps none of them. I don't think any of them, they're all sort of in between values, whether you're paying too much or you're getting too little, and so it's just not, I don't think he'll keep any of them. Uh, moving on to his brother, Bill. Uh, he's got a couple of different uh, options here. He's got Stevie Johnson for $7.00. Uh, Drew Brees for a high price tag for $87, and then Julio Jones for four. The much debated, uh, you know, very controversial Julio Jones that uh, Billy thought he couldn't keep. Uh, but obviously, I mean, we've all scoured our shit, and you can't find anything about Julio Jones. I, as far as I know, Billy drafted Julio Jones, and he never left the squad. I can't find any transaction log or any email or any chat or anything. So he's got him. He can keep him. I think he'll keep Julio Jones for two years at uh, 14 million, or I'm sorry, at 14, and then 19 because he, he drafted him for you know only four dollars. Um, Breeze I think is too expensive to keep. Stevie Johnson might be interesting, but if you're already keeping Julio Jones for such good value, you might as well you know save that money for something else because you're stacked at wide receiver. Uh, and then finally, Bootsy, uh, a very interesting squad. Bootsy um, would have had the right to have kept Jay Cutler if he so uh, you know thought that was a good idea, uh, and he was pretty cheap last year. But he 
he traded him away, so his uh, his key, he can still keep Brandon Marshall, so he could still you know capitalize on a little bit of that, and Matt Forte as well. Hypothetically, Bootsy would have had to have been choosing between Forte, Marshall, and Cutler for for keepers, but he has Stafford for forty six dollars, Marshall's thirty two dollars, and then Matt Forte is fifty three, and then he's got Dwayne Bow for thirty four. So I mean, those are actually all four of them are pretty solid keepers. Um, they're you know definitely a commitment, definitely kind of expensive, but I think it's you know he, he's got good options there. Um, I think really obviously he's a big time Lions fan, and Stafford was sick, and Stafford is super cheap. That it, he would he would take Stafford for a two year contract. He would think it'd be fifty six next year, and then sixty one in two years, which is really cheap for you know the production you can get from Stafford. Uh, and then I think his other keeper would be uh, Brandon Marshall for a year. I mean, Brandon Marshall he got last year for 32 Brandon Marshall definitely was worth that value last year. He was a $32 receiver, definitely, and that was with a terrible quarterback. And now he's back in Chicago, and he's with his boy Jay Cutler, and they're probably going to be sick. So, I don't know, keeping him for one year at $42, I think it's worth it. I would do it. But then again, Bootsy is going to be watching Brandon Marshall score eight touchdowns in two games against the Lions this year. So maybe he should think about a little emotional investment and just remove himself from the situation and not keep Brandon Marshall. Uh, but, you know, you never know how that's going to play out. Well, either way, uh, yeah, this is a little bit uh, shorter than a normal podcast, but that's pretty much all we got as we're headed into the draft. Should be a good time on Saturday. Uh, we'll have plenty to recap, I'm sure, obviously, after uh, Boris uh, drafts Nate Kading again for $18 million. Uh, but that's it. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.